Hello everybody, welcome to equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are very important because when we get to fifth grade it's going to help us unlock a lot of different things. It's going to help us be able to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. It helps us out a lot when we're comparing fractions to each other. It helps us out a lot when we're ordering fractions. It helps us out a lot when we're simplifying or we're reducing fractions to their lowest terms. So this is the key is equivalent fractions and being able to switch back and forth between them. So we've kind of developed this over the last couple of years to kind of explain to kids how equivalent fractions work. So first of all, you see, it's a picture of Mr. D. One of my students developed this program last year to help me out with this. So here's Mr. D. Here's Mr. D with earrings. Same guy, just wearing earrings now. Mr. D with earrings and lipstick now. Mr. D with earrings, lipstick, and a wig. Mr. D is still Mr. D. He just has a disguise on. And that's what we talk about with equivalent fractions. We have a bunch of different ways of saying one half, but we're not really changing what one half is worth. It's still the same fraction underneath. We've just put a disguise on it to try and trick you. And you've got to try and figure out which fraction is which. So let's get to the actual math. But that's what we kind of, the visual we want to get is that they're both the same, they just have a disguise on them. So in the math for our lesson, let's start off with one half. If I color in the same amount, and I'm going to color in straight across here, in this fraction, I've colored in two pieces out of four, so that's two-fourths. So two-fourths is the same thing as one-half. And I say, uh, I apparently love pizza when I do fractions. If I go and I get that real gigantic slice of pizza, so this is like saying, this kid's eating one huge slice of pizza, and this kid's eating two smaller slices that add up to that one huge slice. They're both eating the same amount of pizza, they're just doing it in different fashions. The one kid's two-handed, one big piece, and the other kid's got a piece in either hand. They're eating the same amount, they just look a little different. Let's do the same thing over here. I'm going to go straight across and color in these pieces. Now in this fraction, I've got four pieces that are the same size as these two, that is the same size as this one. So I've colored in four out of eight total, four eighths. So one half, two fourths, and four eighths are all equivalent fractions. They're all basically naming the same thing. They're naming one half. We've just put disguises on them. We've called them something else because we've cut the pieces. And kids get confused because they say, well, wait a minute, when I was little, four is obviously bigger than one. But what they see here is, yeah, but these are four little pieces, and this is one big piece. So they can be worth the same amount. All right? Now let's say we don't have all these fun coloring blocks, because I tell the kids, as you get older, you're not going to be carrying around tools to color and do all these things with. Sometimes you're going to have to do these things mentally. So here's a little trick that we use, and I usually always hit this uh, during March, and we do the little leprechaun dance of whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And we'll do that a million times until it becomes really, really annoying and ingrained in us, so that we we'll remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So let's take a look at these fractions here. I want to turn one half, I want to put a disguise on it, and I'm going to disguise it as a twelfth. So when we do this, whatever we do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. We're going to use multiplication or division. So to put a disguise on, we multiply. To take a disguise off, we divide. So for this one, I'm going to put a disguise on. 2 times what gives me a 12? Well, that's going to be a 6. And our rule is, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I did times 6 here. I'm going to do it up here. 1 times 6. And our disguise is 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. They are equal to each other. Okay. If I wanted to take the disguise off, Let's say 
I started with this fraction and I wanted to take the disguise off. I'm going to look at these denominators again because denominators are the key. That's why I always say whatever we do to the bottom, I'm always looking at the denominator first. 12, let's see here. If I divide by 6 and I work backwards, 12 divided by 6 gives me a 2. Divide by 6 gives me a 1. So to put the disguise on, we multiply. To take a disguise off, we divide to get it to its lowest terms. So let's take a look at this next one. 4 and 8. Well, I'm going to go times 2, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 3 times 2, 6 eighths. And once again, if they give us 6 eighths first, and they want us to take it to its lowest terms, they want us to make the fraction easier, they want us to simplify it, we just take the disguise off by dividing. All right, divide by 2. We're going to work backwards this way. It would give me 4. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Divide by 2 gives me 3. Let's take a look at the next set. So now here we have 3 fifths equals how many tenths? All right, let's look here. 5 times 2. It's going to give me 10, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 3 times 2 gives me a 6. 3 fifths and 6 tenths are equivalent fractions. They're equal. They're worth the same amount. 4 sevenths equals how many 4 tenths? Let's do it again. Times 2 would give me 14. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 fourteenths is the same as 4 sevenths. So the cool thing with equivalent fractions is we can pretty much by fourth grade easily identify things that look like 1 half, but 4 sevenths and 8 fourteenths, 3 fifths and 6 tenths, 3 fourths and 6 eighths, those aren't as easily identifiable. But by using that trick, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top, put a disguise on, we multiply, to take disguises off, we divide. If we use that trick, we can jump back and forth between all the different types of equivalent fractions. And being able to play a bunch of these games helps us get our mind ready for fifth grade when we're going to be changing fractions quite frequently. So that is equivalent fractions, and whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top.